Okay, so in our final lesson here, we're going to go ahead and build our set for rendering, and then we'll go ahead and render out our car. And we're going to be using a global illumination setup through V-Ray, and it's going to be um, fairly simple to go ahead and build our set. So first thing we need to do is we need to bring in the background. And what I like to do for that is just basically use a polygon cylinder that I've cut the ends off and extruded the edges and made it to um, curve like that and just place it on the on the grid as you know as close as we can and we'll go ahead and freeze the transformation center the pivot and clear the history of it I just made those a simple uh, button on my polygon shelf and I'll show you that all it does is it runs the code here which is just to center the pivot let me go ahead and clear that out is to center the pivot delete the history and freeze the transformations so I can do it all within you know one button click instead of having to you know hit three buttons yeah uh, so <clears throat> now we need to go ahead and um, light our scene and the easiest way we can go ahead and do this is just go in here to you know the render settings and we're gonna switch over to to V-Ray and so I need to go ahead and load that plug in there and now that we have it loaded we can simply just go ahead and select it we're gonna set the size here which is gonna be uh, go with custom it's gonna be 3250 by 1828 um, it's a fairly large image for sure um, and it may take a little bit of extra um, time to go ahead and render that but I tend to to like to go ahead and render a rather large image since I have a rather large display and it's going to allow me to capture all the detail that's actually in the model. Um, for the GI I want to go ahead and turn on the global illumination and for the environment I'm going to go ahead and set an image here um, but you want to make sure that you override the environment so that the GI textures <coughs> it's going to use that for the global illumination rather than you know using just a, a color so we'll go ahead and set a file node here and we'll go ahead and set the image which you know I'll just use a, a standard HDRI and it comes in black and that's okay um, just as long as it'll eventually work its way through here and set itself. It just takes a little bit of time to go ahead and load. And there you go, it loaded. I'm going to turn the filter type to off. And now I'm going to go ahead and create a couple V-Ray specific rectangular lights. So we're going to lights and we're going to use the V-Ray rectangle light. Go ahead and bring this up. But as you can see, it comes in fairly small. And you don't want to scale this in the viewport because if I scaled it in the viewport, it's going to also scale its intensity. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go into the attribute editor here of the light. And I'm going to change the, the V size and the U size to something like 50. So this way, I can actually see the light source. <laughs> And I'm going to go ahead and pull this back a little bit. And then I'll just go ahead and duplicate it. And just place these lights as, as needed here. Turn the intensity down a little bit on the one. And then duplicate it a third time. Being mindful that I go ahead and place these in a in a correct position so that it's gonna uh, light our car well, and that's gonna be fine. And so I'm gonna go ahead and import our car here. So I need to go ahead and set the project to be our CG Tuts car, and we'll go ahead and import our car model.
and it's just, just going to take a little bit of time to go ahead and import and there you can see it's brought in the the car model I'm going to go ahead and open the outliner here and select our car ta our car and the same thing freeze the transformations center the pivot and clear the history on the model I'll scale this up a little bit and zoom in on the model just making sure that it's not you know pinching through the uh, the ground too much go ahead and move this back now the key here is going to be making sure that the model is going to smooth and there's you know a couple ways that you can do this the way that I like to go ahead and do it is actually select the model and you know go to the modify tab and convert smooth mesh preview to polygons and that way it's, I mean even though it just adds a little bit of extra geometry it's going to render somewhat fast but if you wanted to do it individually or through V-Ray you would actually have to do it in the uh, in the settings here in the render settings and in the global options you would use the render viewport subdivision but you would also have to select the individual mesh go in here to the attribute editor V-Ray and, and add a subdivision node to it doing that individually for every model especially in this case is probably going to get a little bit hectic simply because there's so many pieces to the actual car so the easy wa easiest way for me to actually go ahead and do it is just you know select the entire model and go to the modify tab hit convert smooth mesh to preview polygon or smooth mesh preview to polygon and this way it smooths out the mesh and we won't have to really worry about the global subdivision node through V-Ray which can also add a lot of time because it's going to render everything with inside the scene smooth instead of just you know one individual part or a certain amount of individual pieces on the model so now that I have that uh, the car smooth I'm going to go over here to the camera settings and add our resolution gate which is the size of our render and just simply try to place it right and then I'll just go ahead here and duplicate the model I'm going to have to scale back a little bit here or zoom out and I'm going to rotate it and that way we can get a a double image of the car and now I'm going to go ahead and go back into the render settings and instead of using the actual Maya viewport window to render or the render window I'm going to use come down here to where under um, device aspect ratio and the pixel aspect ratio and use the, um, the V-Ray frame buffer and whenever I have that checked and hit render it's going to pop up the Maya render window but it's also going to pop up the V-Ray frame buffer window which I tend to use more because it just seems faster than the actual Maya window so now I'm going to go ahead and hit render and uh, call this lesson complete or this tutorial complete and as a final note I just want to give a big thanks out to uh, to Ben Tate, um, Chris Tate and the other guys over at CG Tuts Plus for allowing me to go ahead and do this tutorial um, I hope you guys totally enjoyed it uh, it's definitely been a lot of fun to go ahead and make this tutorial for you guys um, definitely check us out on Facebook <coughs> or uh, 3D Ocean where we sell some of our high quality production 3D models um, and I hope you guys have had fun watching the tutorial and uh, thanks for watching